Social justice, one, two, three. I want to be PC. It's just the way to be for me and you. Your hateful slurs are through. I call wee wee on you. We'll fight until you're PC black and blue. Wee wee. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and today I'm going to review John Ridley's The Other History of the DC Universe, book one. Obviously, I think this is the first in, in a five or a seven part series that's on DC Black Label. This is one of the original uh, DC Black Label titles that we were promised when they they announced the um, announced the new imprint that was going to be premier creators working with premier characters. You know, um, obviously DC Black Label's kind of changed since then. It's kind of the all other brand, but we we finally are getting the other history of the DC universe, which kind of uh, promised to show the history of the DC universe from a different perspective, from the perspective of uh, minority and disenfranchised characters. The first character being Jefferson Pierce, uh, known as Black Lightning, has been in the DC universe for, for quite a while, but as a, as a show on CW, I believe it's been recently uh, canceled. And they're, they're moving on from that one. And this is this is an interesting read. It, it's pretty well illustrated by by uh, Kamo Kamenkoli. But I, I don't know. Is John really really a, a comic book writer? It almost it doesn't really feel like you're reading a comic book. It's it's more like an essay, or maybe a, a thesis as far as injustice as far as America. But it it's kind of weird trying to incorporate that in the DC universe. And I'll kind of get into my my reasoning for saying that. And I kind of come away with either John really, really hates DC Comics characters, specifically like Superman, uh, the Justice League, John Stewart, or or maybe John really, really doesn't like the creators or the history of, the, of, of DC Comics, or maybe some of um, their thoughts as far as inclusion, as far as the characters and stuff. I, I'm not really sure if he actually hates the characters or maybe he just hates the culture at DC or the culture that was at DC does feel like things are, are changing. We're, we're probably in the, the beginning stages of that. Uh, DC uh, definitely feels like it's going to have a different, uh, you know, vibe to it moving forward, probably a lot more uh, social justice issues. It does mention specifically social justice in this comic book, which I thought was um, an odd placement for that. So coming into this comic, I don't even know if, you know, would I recommend it? Not, not really. If you like DC Comics characters and DC Comics history, I don't think this is probably the the comic book for you because it doesn't really get into this. It, it's more of a it's a commentary more on America <laughs> or John Ridley's feelings about America using DC Comics characters to portray them. So, I mean, if you're really into DC Comics characters, this probably isn't. The, the comic book for you, but if you're really into exploring, uh, you know, social commentary as, as far as race relations, uh, you know, war on drugs, stuff like that in America, you know, this, this probably is the comic for you. This feels like something that would probably be more at home or apropos for an indie comic with without established characters, you know, things that John really created himself to, to kind of get into. But those are just my feelings. I, I personally wouldn't recommend this comic book, you know, as a comic book reader. I don't come into to reading comic books so I get a lot of um, commentary, social commentary. I don't mind it, but this is that is absolutely the, the goal of this comic book. It is not really to entertain. It's not really to uh, flesh out the DC universe. It's, it's almost feels like it's here to break down characters and, and make you not like them. So I, I thought that was an interesting take. I'm surprised DC Comics actually let him do this with their characters, and I'll get into that here in a bit. So to be, just to begin with, this is an exceptionally wordy comic book. Is it like Bendis? No. It's not like a Bendis, like over, overly dialogued. Um, the character doesn't have a voice. The, the character here certainly has a voice. Uh, John Ridley's voice, I, I think, is mostly what it is. I don't know that it's specifically Jefferson Pierce, but the character does have a distinct voice throughout and this is kind of what the comic book is. Like I said, it reads more like an essay or some type of thesis rather than a, an entertaining comic story. There are people that are going to love this. It, you know, it just personally wasn't for me. I did think the opening of it was was pretty successful and interesting. Uh, I was like, man, this is going to take a really long time to read just the way that it's it's kind of laid out. But, you know, we, we get the origins of uh, 
Black Lightning, and you know he wanted to be an athlete, and you know his father was was shot. He was a proud man. He he bled out. He wasn't able to save him. He trained his entire lifetime to be in the Olympics. He finally won the gold medal. He broke all the records. He was you know a superhuman in his mind. And then you know it, afterwards he didn't feel like. Uh, winning the gold and all the work that he put in that was really worth it. it. He didn't feel any accomplishment from it. He started developing uh, these powers because he had this like inner almost rage inside of him that was coming out and being is coming out with like electricity. He's he's waking up with singed blankets. He beats the love of his life and he gets married. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. This is a really good introduction to the character. There's certainly some things that are changed here, <clears throat> but then it kind of just went off the rails. And there's, there's a reason I don't think this comic book works. And it's placing the characters in the DC Universe history like parallel or within our own history. Because if you think about it, you know, this, this moment here where um, basically Jefferson Pierce really trashes the Justice League and, you know, ben, you know basically portrays them as not heroes because of the... Um, the Iran hostage situation that happened in 1972, I'm sorry, 1979. And the Justice League didn't go out and save those people, so they couldn't be heroic. And in that sense, he's probably correct. But that event didn't like happen in the DC universe. It's, it's, it works when you do like The Watchmen because it's an alternate like history of, of, our, <laughs> of our history with heroes in them and they're all flawed and broken. The DC Universe history isn't the same history as America or the world that we actually live in. And that's why a lot of people enjoy it because you go visit it. It's something different. It's escapism, what we're dealing with here. But to act like everything that's happened within DC Comics history and all those characters and Superman was there, you know, while Vietnam was happening but didn't intervene. And Superman was there when, you know, the, the Iran hostage situation happened but didn't intervene. And the Justice League just walked away because they didn't want to be political. And it really does a lot of damage to the characters or even, you know, obviously there's this uh, uh, this picture over here on the with Reagan's uh, button, you know, for when he was running for president, there's blood splatter on it, obviously trying to make a statement. When you think about Jefferson Pierce and what he's been fighting with, against his entire life, you know, uh, fighting thugs and, and drug pushers and stuff like that. Has there ever been a president in American history that fought more voraciously against drugs and, and to, to rid the streets of of drug dealers and Ronald Reagan, you know, it almost feels like the president that Black Lightning would support. There's certainly uh, some very large aspects of it. So trying to incorporate the real history of Earth <laughs> with this DC history does make the characters look bad because they would have intervened. Obviously, Superman wouldn't have just left hostages there. The Justice League would have done something. They would be like, well, it's not our place. Of course, it is your place. You've been doing that your entire lives. So I think that just really, as far as a comic and like storytelling goes, it doesn't work because he's trying to look at the at the history of the U.S. and say that the heroes in the DC universe were not actors, and we all know that that wouldn't have been the case. So that was that's probably the biggest failing in the comic because it just doesn't work in my mind. Of course, for some people, it is going to work. Now, he definitely doesn't like some, some characters, and first and foremost is Superman. And obviously, we're, we're getting the narrative that um, Black Lightning doesn't like Superman and he doesn't respect him, but you definitely get the feeling it's probably John Ridley that doesn't like him. And here in the beginning, he's kind of, um, you know, Superman is only there to save Metropolis because that's the white city, and um, his city is kind of like, in the shadows of Metropolis, and that's where all the, the poor black people live. So P Superman would never go in there and help. Like, is that Superman's character? <laughs> that doesn't feel like the Superman uh, that I know and love. And obviously he's fighting crime in, um, in his town, and Superman finally comes in. He's not here to fight crime. He's only here to confront Black Lightning. You know, he found me on a rooftop and levitated annoyingly while giving me an actual damn speech about how I was on the wrong side of the law. I looked Superman right in the eyes and asked him why the most powerful man in the universe made the flight across MLK to come looking for me. If he didn't want to deal with the dealers, then he couldn't help us tear down some of the tenements and put up decent housing. 
<laughs> like, like, does it seem like Superman is the type of character that would that would care, or the he, type of hero that would care the the race of the people that he was protecting? He was there for all Americans. In fact, in modern, more modern tales, he's there for the entire world. But yeah, this is weird stuff. Like that patriotic suit and that big S on his chest were rooted in his superiority. And I'm, I'll get back into that here in a minute. They were manifestations of guilt and self-doubt and the need for outside validation. Does that sound like Superman to you? It doesn't sound like Superman to me. Like, who is John Ridley speaking about? I think he's talking maybe about DC Comics writers or maybe DC Comics as a company or maybe comics as a as a whole. He's not talking about Superman. That's never the way Superman's ever been portrayed. Maybe that's the way that um, John Ridley sees Superman, but... I don't think that's ever been the portrayal that we've ever gotten of Superman. And it's really weird. We kind of get into this next one. Um, and he's still talking about Superman. And this is when his, his cousin Kara joins up. And uh, after Vietnam humiliation, and as Japan was snagging up all of our real estate, for a lot of people, it was real comforting to know that the Anglo-Saxon Kryptonian influence wasn't waning. That's like a really weird um, way to, you know, portray the character. You know, he, almost doesn't like that he's six foot three, 230 pounds of blue eyed chiseled jaw boy scout. Um, and there's like almost a disdain for the character. And this, this weird, like he's the symbol of Anglo-Saxon like dominance, like um, Superman is the, the symbol of oppression for black lightning. It, it's really weird. Cause if you think about Superman, he's created by two Jewish men, like, in the height of the third right if you think about what what superman likely represents to the actual creators and what they were trying to to portray in the character is that he's an he's a man from a world that was destroyed obviously in europe they were hitler and the nazis were trying to wipe out all jews in europe they had no home anymore and america was a place where Superman landed after his home was destroyed. He was the last one. A lot of, of, of uh, survivors of the Holocaust might have been the only members of that family left. You know, it was very um, devastating as far as the, the, the Jewish population, Jewish community, and the Jewish psyche. And then Superman is accepted by his parents and accepted by, by America and um, brought in as one of their own and was the great symbol of hope that you know, there is a place for you, a place where you can flourish and thrive and be happy and it's peaceful and um, people people will love you. That's likely what Superman represents to the creators and for, for DC Comics and the history, the comic history as a whole. But to, to like to throw this weird like characterization that he's the symbol of the oppressor. Like, ha John, really, you need to have like more than you're like... Uh, your blinders on there's more to this world than just what's happened to you you can say what happened to, to um to the jewish people in europe or in in the survivors in america and why superman would be something different for them and to just portray them portray this character like that and for dc comics to allow it multiple times in this comic book i think is is crazy i'm i'm, I'm shocked that well i'm not shocked that they did it but i am shocked that they did it because it's it's so um it's outrageous. It's an outrageous characterization of Superman and what he re represents. And you can tell John really hates Superman. I don't think he appreciates the creators. I don't think he appreciates the struggle that the creators and, and their people actually went through when, when they created Superman. And um, it's really very off-putting to me uh, that, he, that he would portray Superman this way. And it kind of goes into the Justice League as well. There's a I think this might have been more commentary on DC Comics or maybe the comics uh, industry as a whole. At one point, they do like a test <clears throat> for Black Lightning where they throw in these like three kind of scrub villains and he passed the test. So the Justice League were going to invite him in. And um, and this is what he, what he says. And when they were done testing me, the JLA went through some internal hand wringing over affirmative action and tokenism and what it would mean to have a minority as part of their little group. Despite the fact that they had aliens and an Atlantean, and there had been a formalized discussion just to figure out what they could do about including a black man. After all that, they finally offered me membership with all the grace and dignity of liberals tripping over their own condescension. 
I told the Justice League straight to their face, get yourself another boy. And then he goes on to trash Jon Stewart in the process. And like, this is just a Justice League or the flagship team of DC Comics. And he, they're letting John really just rip in the shreds. And I believe he's actually ripping DC Comics to shreds as far as tokenism and, and including minority characters and kind of forcing them on, then on teams or making sure that, you know, you had one of everything that, that we've been seeing lately. Um, at least that's the way I took it. Or that or he just hates the Justice League. It is like um, the only reason the Justice League would ever invite Black Lightning onto their team is because, you know, he's the token black guy. Does that seem like the Justice League to you? There's a Martian, there's a Kryptonian, there's an Atlantean. There's been plenty of minority figures. You know, just recently, John Stewart is a member of the Justice League, and he really does have a seem to have a thing with the Justice League. And I don't know, it's just so weird that just reading this and letting DC Comics let John really just trash the shit out of all their important characters and all their history. You know, um, John really didn't create the Justice League. He didn't create Black Lightning. He didn't create any of this. But he's allowed to come in and just tear it all to the ground. And uh, really, I don't know. I don't know if this will be long term damage, but <clears throat> certainly, if this is your first introduction to DC Comics, you hate a lot of characters, just like John really seems to. Seems to really hate a lot of the um, the culture around comics. And it, the <clears throat> the John Stewart stuff's really weird. Like. I mean, he might, you know, he he called him everything else but like an Uncle Tom. It was just the weird, weirdest thing. I think this might also be kind of a, a, a commentary on 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 comic books. How you know you had the black the black uh, Green Lantern, but he was never allowed to do anything. He was always the reserve, temporary stand-in. I don't. Do, do, is that what people refer to John? Uh, Stewart as the Green Lantern, you know, I was thought he was the military Green Lantern, the military leader that, you know, had terrific bearing and was cool under pressure and that you couldn't, you know, Hal Jordan's a hothead and you can get him to do something crazy if you challenge him enough. And uh, Kyle Rayner is kind of the sensitive one and Guy Gardner is the meathead and John Stewart was, was, is the one that's cool under pressure. But that is not the way John Ridley feels about him. Although he does, you know, eventually, once John Stewart, you know, destroys a planet and kills a billion people, he does reconcile the two characters that kind of going along with the history of um, of Black Lightning. But <clears throat> I don't know. It was rough reading the first half with John Stewart because that's a character I really like and admire. But man, John really does not like that character. It's not it's not Black Lightning that doesn't like the character. This is all John Ridley's commentary. Like, it's it's really strange. The way that that Jefferson Pierce Black Lightning is written, written, he's like kind of a condescending, really arrogant, thinks very highly of himself, always trashing the other heroes, always trashing uh, the other characters. He's kind of an asshole throughout of it, and I don't think anything really like like signifies it better than this page right here. It just it just almost makes you hate the character. Um, it he he has his belt as part of his uniform that kind of like constricts his power so he can harness it and, and be able to utilize it. He finds out the man that had created it is a man that actually killed his father. He was, he was an assassin from the 100. And and he, he takes a, the belt off. He doesn't want to be harnessed anymore. He wants to be like untethered and be able to, uh, to fully use his power. And uh, he doesn't want to be regulated anymore. And then this, this is what he says about that. Well, I was no longer looking to be kept in check. I was holding on to more hurt and anger than I knew what knew how to carry. I wasn't going to carry it alone. I passed it on on to, on to all the punks and thugs. I left them with broken bones, with their skulls cracked. I didn't care. They weren't uh, just getting what they deserved. I didn't buy the argument that people are a product of their environment. People have got choices. Thugs choose to to do to be uh, to be thugs. Dealers choose to be dealers. Peter chose to be to put three slugs in the back of my dad's head. He chose to turn my mother into a widow. And Peter, you know, he talks about how he took a bullet for it for him. So I guess it, at some point, you know, somebody's trying to assassinate Black Lightning, and this man that is the, the assassin that, that had killed his father jumps in front of the bullet. And this is what he had to say about that. The 100 had sent a well-armed contract killer to suicide slum. Peter put himself between us. 
It was just show. It was not heroic. Only a dramatic suicide. Like the guy saved his life. You know, I think he was trying to to atone for the sins of uh, what he had done to his father. But he, it was just a dramatic suicide. It's just really weird takes. And you know, he he doesn't like being called uh, a thug or anything like that with, by uh, su Superman or Batman. He takes great offense to it. But he will let he will call anybody else in the world a thug or a dealer and stuff like that. He's very kind of a hypocritical character. This is a really bad take on Black, Black Lightning, in my opinion. Um, very unlikable. But not nearly as unlikable as Superman, the Justice League, Jon Stewart. Um, I don't know. This is a really weird comic, in my opinion. I think you're going to see a lot of people say, that, like, oh, this was groundbreaking and stuff like this. Now, I think this was character-breaking. This is, like, character, like, assassination, almost. Like, he really... John really, really dislikes the DC Comics characters. I don't know. I always find it weird. Like, if you're trying to elevate Black Lightning by trying to take someone else's creation down, I always think it's like a strange way to go about it. That feels like what he's doing here. I imagine a lot of people are going to enjoy this, and I'm going to get some hate for this video, but I can only be honest about what I read and the way it made me feel coming out of it. Um, I think there's probably a way to tell the other history of the DC universe through the actual lens of the DC universe and DC history, including it, you know, and, and including our history into it, just, it muddles everything up. And, you know, yeah, if, if, <laughs> if, if a lot of events happened and the Justice League did nothing about them, are they heroes? Well, they wouldn't be, but they didn't do nothing because they aren't in this world and we're not in their world. They don't, they don't cross over like that. And I think it's, it's difficult and it doesn't work when you try to do that. You, you can make it work with like a Watchmen or something like that, but that is an alternate universe. It's an alternate history, even though they have brought you know the the Watchmen, I guess, into our universe recently. Probably a big mistake, even though I really enjoyed Doomsday Clock. But um, yeah, I think John Ridley is probably very successful in what he was attempting to do here. You know, he, he, you know, feels like he was trying to to kill a bunch of DC Comics characters, and in a lot of people's mind, he's probably going to be successful. Not my mind. He just kind of killed any hope or any idea that I thought that he would have a decent Batman or any of this. I would never read any of this anymore. I, it's, um, it's not the comic for me. Obviously, some people are going to enjoy it and you know say it's groundbreaking and you know amazing, amazing, uh, amazing take on the universe. I completely disagree. Couldn't disagree more. That's just my take. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy the other history of the DC universe? Do you think John really actually hates DC Comics characters? Do you think John Ridley is making a commentary on the comic book industry or maybe the way that DC Comics ran things in the past and the way maybe they, they didn't push John Stewart to the forefront? Do you think he really hates John Stewart or do you think he hates DC Comics for making John Stewart an afterthought? So th those are some interesting thoughts. But with the stuff that he with Superman and trying to make him like the like the, the symbol of oppression, it does not work for me. It flies in the face of uh, Superman's history. Flies in the face of the, the intent that the creators who did it and the history that they had, the suffering that those that the, the creators and, and their people had as far as, um, you know, the Jewish people in, in World War II when Superman was created. So and certainly the way that he treated the Justice League, I thought was. Was just bad. It was just bad comic writing. And it doesn't really read like a comic. It is an essay or some type of thesis. So I don't know. Can't wait to hear what you guys think. Not the comic for me.